The human visual system is marvelous. Our eyes project light onto the retina, this thin layer of nerve cells at the back of the eye. And this triggers an avalanche of neural activity, resulting in all the wonders of the visual world. It feels as if we could take in the beauty and details of the scene in front of us in a single glance. However, this is an illusion. The retina can only resolve the clutter of the visual world in a small area around the center of gaze. To overcome this limit, the visual system needs to constantly move our eyes, taking different high-resolution snapshots several times per second. This means vision is an active process of selection. At each moment in time, the visual system needs to decide where to move the eyes next. But how does this work? Scientists used to think our brains could compute where to look by decomposing the image and finding aspects that pop out, such as a red tulip surrounded by green grass. But it turns out that where we look is not quite as simple. Two people looking at the same scene can show very different patterns of eye movements, so where they look cannot be explained merely by the image. One may make twice as many eye movements as the other. Some people tend to look more at faces and others at text. Understanding where these differences come from may help us to understand the general mechanisms of gaze. And because different people look at scenes in different ways, we may even be able to use these differences to diagnose neurological or developmental disorders. As part of my PhD at Justus Liebig University Gießen, I developed a quick test for individual eye movements, which takes only two minutes. Could such data help us to diagnose clinical disorders earlier and better? It's hard to tell without knowing the breadth of individual differences in the general population. Most studies on eye movements take place in university laboratories, but studying the eyes of student volunteers will never be representative. This is why we decided to move out of the lab and teamed up with Mathematikum, a popular Gießen museum with 100,000 visitors per year, from kindergarten kids to pensioners. Together, we built this eye tracking booth, allowing visitors to benchmark their eye movements using our quick test. So far, 5,000 visitors have taken part, learned about their gaze, and donated over a million eye movements. This already renders our dataset one of the largest and most diverse in the world. In the end, we hope to gather at least 10,000 datasets. In parallel, our colleagues from neurology and psychiatry are recording clinical data we can compare to this. Collecting eye tracking data at this scale can give us new and exciting insights into how the individual brain makes us see the world. This is just one example of the kind of work we are doing in the Center for Mind, Brain and Behavior, a joint initiative of the Universities of Marburg and Gießen.